I know that many of you may have questions about how personal continuity works or doesn't work or how we, how we figure out personal continuity within an early Buddhist perspective. That is, how we're the same person over time or are we the same person over time? In particular, how does that have to do with karma and karmic consequences over time? This is a, a deep question. I'll, I'll touch on a bit of it today. I'm Doug Smith of the Online Dharma Institute. That's onlinedharma.org. If you're new to this channel and interested in living a wiser and a kinder and a calmer life, consider subscribing to the channel and click the bell down below if you want to receive notifications when I come out with new videos. I know that many of you, because I got a lot of questions about this over the months and years, many of you are interested in this question of, of am I the same person uh, tomorrow that I, w that I was today, or will be tomorrow that I am today? Was, am I the same person today that I was a week ago or a year ago? What is it that pulls me together into being the same person? This is the kind of a question that I think uh, concerns us, especially if we understand a little bit about Buddhism, about the Buddhist idea of non-self. And we sort of have questions about, about that. We want, to, we want to have some certainty that, that we're, the, we're going to be the same person tomorrow that we are now, that, that our past is really our past, that, that maybe we'll be able to, to live forever. Th these are the kinds of issues that I think a lot of us uh, at least look to when we, especially if we look to a more traditional understanding of Buddhism that involves rebirth, uh, we, we want to think of, uh, of ourselves being reborn. And also when it comes to issues of karma, how does that work? How is it that, that uh, the person who does the deed gets the karmic consequence? Is it the same person? And I think we'll find that the Buddha's actual discussion of this was somewhat paradoxical, or at least subtle in many ways. It's, it's something that's not really very easy to get our minds around, but I'll, at least I'll attempt to uh, sketch out a bit of that in today's lecture. If we look to what the Buddha says, or at least to the texts that are available to us from early Buddhism, which is really all we have of what the Buddha said, or might have said anyway, uh, we find a discussion uh, of personal continuity or many discussions, but I'll, dis I'll be dealing with one today. A discussion that seems to bring into question this issue of personal continuity. It's not clear how much of this continuity he really thought existed, or, although he th there's still some of it. I'll, let me put it that way. Uh, so anyway, the, the discussion here is with the ascetic Kasapa. And the ascetic Kasapa uh, wants to know uh, where our suffering arises from. That is, what is the, the, the root or the cause of our suffering? In particular, does our suffering, he says, come from ourself? Does it come from somebody else or other people? Does our suffering come from both ourself and other people? Or is, does our suffering come from neither ourself nor other people? That is to say, does our suffering simply arise uh, spontaneously or randomly, that there's uh, no cause uh, of it? And the Buddha uh, rejects all four of these possibilities, which is, I think, somewhat surprising. Now, the Buddha goes on to explain, uh, f in the first instance, does, does suffering arise from ourself? Now, this, I think, the Buddha takes to mean, uh, is, the, is it the case that the suffering that we feel now, our sense of unsatisfactoriness, our, the, the difficulties we have in life, is that all due to our own karmic baggage? That's really what the question is here. That is, are we responsible for the suffering we, we, uh, we feel we experience because uh, of things that we have done in the past? Uh, uh, the, 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 these things we've done in the past that were unskillful, they've, the, the unskillful nature of them has laid down bad karma, that karma has come to fruition, and we're, all that we feel around us is expressing that. And the Buddha says that, that this is not correct. In fact, what he says is, as suppose that the person who does the deed experiences the result. Then, for one who has existed since the beginning, suffering is made by oneself. This statement leads towards eternalism. 
So what is the Buddha saying here? What the Buddha is saying here is that the claim that suffering arises from oneself is, at the very least, misleading. Now, there's a number of different points here that I think we have to separate. Uh, the first point that, that we should separate out is the question as to whether all of what we experience is due to our karma. Now, in a separate sutta, a different sutta, the Buddha actually takes issue with that as well and says that, you know, not everything that we experience in our lives is due to our own, uh, our own efforts in the past, due to our own intentions in the past. That is, sometimes we'll experience uh, p pleasures or pains that are due to uh, things that we've done in the past, but sometimes they, we won't. In other words, not every pain is due to karma. Uh, he says, you know, sometimes we get sick simply because uh, we have some illness or we eat something that doesn't agree with us. And in circumstances like these, perhaps, these may not have anything to do with our karma. They're just random, basically. That is to say, not everything that we experience is literally due to karmic uh, consequence. That's the first issue. Uh, but the Buddhist clearly does believe in karma. Uh, that is to say, he's not throwing out karma here when he's discussing all of this issue of personal, uh, uh, personal continuity over time. And that's part of the com complexity here that we're having to deal with. So, given that, he, that we already know that not everything we, uh, that we experience is due to our karma, nevertheless, it seems like some of it is. And yet, what the Buddha says, nevertheless, is that you know, there's some problem here with this notion that suffering is due to ourself or our own, our own uh, causes in the past, or the, only, the things that we've done in the past. So what is this problem then with the, the notion that at least some of our suffering comes from ourself? Well, what he says is that this leads towards eternalism. That's the way it's put in the text, which is kind of a roundabout way or complicated way, a somewhat unclear way, I think, of saying that if we take that idea that our suffering comes from ourself, that seems to imply the existence of a self that exists underneath the phenomena. That is to say, a permanent, unchanging self that is literally the same uh, back when we did the act that's, and today. It's the exact same self. There is this permanent, unchanging self underneath phenomena. As he says, one who has existed since the beginning. That's sort of how he puts it here. So, and the Buddha doesn't believe in such a self, or at least in the Buddha's understanding, there is no evidence. We don't see such a self. There isn't any part of ourselves that continues the same over time. So, if we assert that um, our suffering right now, or whatever we experience right now, is due to it being the same self as before, well, that's misleading, because it seems to imply this exact sameness over time. But then we might say, well, okay, if there isn't the same self now as before, then they must be completely different selves. Then it must be that what we experience now isn't due to ourself, but it's due to somebody else in the past that did something that now we're suffering the consequences of. That is, if we reject the idea that there is this permanent, unchanging self underneath all of the phenomena that continues from the past into the future, if we reject that, then we seem to be saying that there's no personal continuity at all, that, that we're completely different people from moment to moment. And the Buddha rejects this as well. And the Buddha says, suppose that one person does the deed and another experiences the result. Then for one stricken by feeling, that is to say stricken by a, a pleasure or a pain, Suffering is made by another. This statement leads towards annihilationism. That is, if we're going to reject continuity and in its place uh, put in this idea that, that we're different from moment to moment, that one person does the deed and a different person uh, experiences the result, that seems to imply that we only exist for a moment and then we're annihilated and replaced by somebody completely different that we only exist for a fraction of a second, perhaps, and, and every fraction of a second there's a new you that somehow pops into existence and is annihilated again. That's the, that's the view that we seem to have here. And the Buddha 
the Buddha doesn't agree with this view either. Indeed, what we see here are the two typical extremes that we find the, the Buddha uh, putting himself up against. The extreme of eternalism on the one hand, and the extreme of, extreme of annihilationism on the other, or nihilism on the other. These are the typical two extremes that the Buddha argues against. And he argues against them here in this uh, sutta, but, but in many, many suttas, he argues against these two extremes in various ways with the idea of dependent origination. Dependent origination being the kind of middle path between these two extremes of eternalism and annihilationism. Now, what is dependent origination? Well, it, it, dependent origination is a theory basically of the causal production of suffering, or we might also understand it as a theory of the causal production of our sense of self, our sense of self, our idea about a self. It's a little bit too complicated for me to get into in this video, but I have done a past video on it, which I'll leave a link to down below in the show notes if you want to know more about this, the Buddha's theory of dependent origination. But in a nutshell, the, the basic overview of dependent origination is that we exist as a, a kind of a process, a series of causes and conditions over time. That there are mental and physical causes and conditions that go up into making what we think of as ourselves. Uh, uh, particular causes of body and mind that act together over time to produce all that we experience, if you like, all that we are as a person. And there, this persists through time, from the past to the present into the future, without there being anything permanent within it. It's a causal stream of a certain kind. Now, this story that the Buddha tells, which t again tells a story of a kind of personal continuity without there being a an essential self without there being a permanent self, this kind of story has led some uh, secular Buddhists uh, to, to say that perhaps the Buddha didn't mean to express the idea of literal rebirth, because there isn't literally the same self uh, that is, would be born into the next life as is in this life. Now, while I myself am a secular practitioner, and so I am somewhat sympathetic to that kind of uh, that kind of aim. Nevertheless, I think that that's not really a, a correct way to look at at least what the Buddha was saying. In other words, what the Buddha's intention was with his theory. For the Buddha, uh, rebirth was understood to be a special case of the general case of, of personal continuity over time. While there isn't literally the same person from moment to moment, there is nevertheless the same causal stream the same stream of causes and conditions that leads uh, particular personal traits, let's say, to persist through time, that suggests that particular physical traits as well will persist over time. That's what happens without there being some essence underneath it all. And that same process, the Buddha believed, uh, links one life to another. That is to say, the last moment of uh, of, the, of the earlier life is, is somehow linked causally to the first moment of the second life, or the, the later life. Now, I don't find, personally don't find this a particularly credible story, but nevertheless many people do, and it, it is a traditionally understood uh, story about personal continuity over lifetimes. But we have to think about is that for the Buddha, uh, basically our lives uh, through time are like, I mean, I think that the best way to think of them is like a stream, like streams. In the same way, a stream persists over time, a, persi a, a stream persists over space, so it, it can, we can think of the stream as being a mile behind us and a mile in front of us. We can think of the same stream being flowing today as flowed uh, last year and as will flow next year even though there's nothing literally the same in that stream. It's, the, it's different water every moment. Uh, we might even say, okay, well, it's the same water that's just traveling down the stream, but this, the water is in different arrangements from, from moment to moment. If we look long enough, let's say over a, 
a month or so. It's literally different water all the time. I mean, all the water has been uh, has, has flowed out of it and been replaced by different water. So there's literally nothing the same. And the same, that particular view is what the Buddha believed about personal continuity having to do with us as well. So what we see here is a complex picture that the Buddha paints for us. A picture in which a personal continuity over time, in a sense, doesn't exist. There isn't literal personal continuity, but there is something that for the Buddha expresses the same thing, which is this idea of causes and conditions over time that captures our karmic baggage. The karmic baggage that was laid down in an earlier part of the same stream then comes to fruition in a later part of the same stream, even though it's not literally anything, even though there's not literally anything the same. And that that same process then persists from lifetime to lifetime in a traditional understanding. Now, if you want to uh, learn more, uh, at least hear more, about some of the ideas behind the sort of history, I think, of this rebirth idea, which is so important when we come to something like uh, the dependent origination, uh, check, take a look at this earlier video of mine in which I discuss some of the history of re the rebirth idea and some thoughts I have on it. I'll put it up here on the screen. If you're getting something out of these videos, please do check out my Patreon page and join us. Thanks so much, and we'll catch you on the next video. And meanwhile, all of you, be well.